Today's stories are on the topic of Glitch in the Matrix. I've only covered this topic once. Joining me today is Azure Raven Dreams. He covers this topic quite often on his channel, so if you enjoy his narration, as well as this topic, make sure you sub to his channel. His links will be in the description and in the pinned comment, so head over there and check his stuff out. And sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'd like to preface this by saying my husband is an electrical engineer and I am a teacher. We're not crazy people. So, back when my husband and I were dating, my husband was in a terrible car crash. His truck hit black ice and he slid onto oncoming traffic. His truck was completely totaled, so was the other truck he hit. The weird thing though, both he and the other guy were completely fine, not a scratch on them. All my husband had was a bruise on his knee. The first responders were baffled, as was the towing company and insurance when they realized no one had died or was severely injured. Fast forward to a few days after the crash, my husband comes over to my apartment. We're having a conversation about a university class we're both in and he casually asked me when I got a flat screen TV sitting on my dresser. At this point, I was very confused because I had this little flat screen since I was 13 and had it the entire year we had been dating. Asked him what he was talking about. He told me to quit pulling his leg and asked me what I did with the old tube TV. I had no idea what he was talking about and told him so. He was convinced I had a tube TV. I proceeded to go on Facebook and showed him the pictures we had taken two weeks prior with a TV in the background. It's a flat screen in the picture. My husband goes white like he has seen a ghost and stares into space for a minute. His eyes start to water. I ask him what is wrong and he said, I swear to God, I'm not crazy. You've had a tube TV since we started dating. It was a tube TV when we took that picture. I brushed it off as him being rattled from the accident and he didn't bring it up again. However, anytime we hung out in my room, he'd always look at the TV weird. Fast forward seven years, my husband and I have been married for a few years and decided that we were ready to be parents. I'm not on birth control and we decided whatever happens, happens. We're not actively trying, but not preventing it either. So we're on vacation in Italy, wandering around Rome and I feel like shit. I had had my period that week before and it was one of the worst I've had in my whole life. As we were walking around, I'm suffering from back pain chills and horrific cramping. I go to the bathroom in the cafe and hurl my guts out, have diarrhea and realize I'm menstruating heavily. Obviously I'm weirded out since I just had my period that week before. I clean myself up and go back to my husband and tell him I think we need a doctor. I have a pretty high pain tolerance but this is insane. It's getting to the point that I'm having trouble walking and I start feeling pain in my shoulders. I don't want to ruin our vacation, but I'm starting to really worry. My husband is smarter than me, sees the state I'm in, and says I'm visibly paler than when I went to the bathroom and gets me help. 20 minutes later, I'm on a stretcher being taken to the hospital. An hour after that, I'm being prepped for emergency surgery as the doctor tells me I have a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. I have heavy internal bleeding, and if he doesn't perform the surgery, I'm going to die. Six hours later, I wake up very sore and tired. The doctor tells me I'm very lucky, and if I had waited any longer to seek medical attention, I'd be dead. My husband stays with me in the hospital the first night, then gets a hotel for the rest of my stay. A week later, we're cleared to fly home, and I go through a grueling month of healing from the surgery. Two months after our return, somehow my husband and I get on the topic of fires and he goes on about the dangers of kitchen fires and I say, no need to worry, we're all set with an extinguisher in the closet. He looks at me like I have three heads and asks me what I'm talking about. I remind him about the extinguisher in the front closet where we keep our coats. We've had it for three years. He insisted we buy one when we bought our house. My husband shakes his head and tells me that he has no idea what I'm talking about and we don't have a fire extinguisher. 
I remind him about not only the memories of us fighting about if we really needed one, where to put it, buying it from Home Depot, but also installing it on the wall in the closet. He looks at me with confusion and tells me none of that happened. I get up, go to the front closet, all while cursing at him for being an asshole for forgetting our two week fight about it. And lo and behold, no extinguisher. Not only is there no extinguisher, but there's no holes in the wall where I know we installed it. No fresh paint. The wall has never been touched. I insist he's moved it and fixed the wall, and he asked me why the fuck would he play such a stupid prank. He continues to insist we've never had one, let alone talking about getting one. This goes on for several minutes. I'm approaching hysterics. Tell him to quit playing games when he finally says, Now you know how I feel about the TV. We didn't speak about this for a long time. Then after I found this thread, he brought up this theory that perhaps in another timeline or dimension, whatever you want to call it, we both actually died and we reset like a video game and the TV and extinguisher are glitches. I don't know if I agree with him. All I know is I've never been so rattled in my life and every time I get something from that closet I'm overwhelmed with this feeling of wrongness. I know it should be there, but somehow, it's just not. I can't explain it. He says he will go to the grave swearing I had a tube TV. I think my husband actually experienced a reality shift or a matrix glitch because of some of the things he's mentioned to me lately about small things. He actually told me about the actual glitch that he knows happened, but he says that after that there have been things that are weird to him that he's been noticing. We're both pretty big into weird things like glitches in the Matrix and paranormal things, but he never expected to experience one of his own. I guess I should start with the actual glitch that my husband experienced. He and my son were out picking up food from the grocery store for dinner, which is not something he normally has to do, nor does he volunteer to do it. However, on that specific day, he had actually mentioned that he wanted to go to the store, and my son wanted to go with him, so they went out together. Fine by me, one less thing I have to do in the end. He told me that, while they were there, they were walking around grabbing things and they went down the aisle with the condiments. He had grabbed a bottle of mustard, because we were out, and then moved on to the next aisle to get something, when my son randomly remembered that we were also out of ketchup, because he had used the last of it the day before on his spaghetti. I know that's weird, don't ask. I'm not going to question him on why he puts ketchup on spaghetti. Anyways. My husband says that he'll go grab it, and tells my son to stay there since it was only an aisle away. He headed over to get it, and he said that it wasn't there, which made no sense, since it was the same aisle that they had just gone down. He then looked up, and he noticed that he was actually in the bread aisle, about two aisles down the store. He mentioned that he had somehow literally walked one aisle over, but then ended up three aisles away from where he started. He even verified this by walking back to where the condiments were, and going one more aisle and making sure that our son was still standing there, and he was. Obviously this makes no sense, and he says that it felt like he had almost somehow teleported to the bread aisle. But he moved on, grabbed the ketchup, and then finished shopping and was just super excited to tell me about what he experienced. Well, that's not where the weirdness ends. He said that now there are strange little things that are different that he's struggling to accept. The first thing he mentioned was my laptop. I do work as a graphic designer, and I work for a small company that does visual designs for larger corporations. Because of COVID, my position is now a fully remote one, and I have a room dedicated to being my office, which is a room that the other two typically don't go into. The other day, I was working on something, and my husband had to come in to tell me something else, 
and as soon as he walked up to my desk, he paused and started staring at my work computer. I asked him what was going on, and he asked me where my MacBook was. I have literally never used a Mac. I don't personally like the operating system on Apple computers and have always had a standard, Windows-based laptop. I told him this and he responded with, No, you had a MacBook Pro. I remember you and me sitting down to look at what you could order through your work, and we chose a really beefy Mac because that's what they wanted you to have. I recall the conversation you had with your boss where they told you the whole team was moving to Apple computers and you were upset about it. I told him that that had never happened, and I had no idea what he was talking about. We had a small argument about it, nothing too severe, just a disagreement, and we moved on. One of the other events that happened was when we went to order pizza last weekend. My husband was asking what we wanted, and my son said that he wanted pepperoni. My husband immediately stopped and just stared at him like he had grown a third arm or something. He then started going on about how much my son hated pepperoni, and said that he always asked for a cheese pizza, extra cheese, add chicken. My son has no memory of ever asking for this, and as far back as I can remember, my son has always loved pepperoni. Obviously, this was another thing that upset my husband, but we got our pizza and we moved on. I actually had a conversation with him about all this, and he told me that there are other small things that have been eating away at him that have changed. Things like the neighbor's cars are different from what he remembers, and one of the neighbors seems to live in a different house than what he remembered. He also mentioned that he was confused that I had eaten clams the other day, since he swears I was allergic to shellfish. There were a few other things about our son and about our home that he said felt different. I tried to talk to him about them, but I can tell that it's really upsetting him. And he then mentioned that he thinks he's either losing it, or he has shifted to a different existence. Obviously, nothing seems out of place for me, other than his behavior and how he's feeling and acting about things. For the record, he has no mental health issues, he doesn't use drugs or drink, and he hasn't suffered any injuries. And all of these things just started happening after he had that weird event at the grocery store. So this actually happened last week. It just took some time to come to terms with it. I got a phone call from a next door neighbor late in the evening asking if I could help him move his mattress into his upstairs. His mom is ill and has a big heavy sleep number bed. I of course ran over to help because they're great neighbors. I get over there and his friend, who is also a priest, was there to help. I helped him figure out how to separate the mattress from the bed so we could fit it upstairs. We get it all moved up and back in place when my neighbor asked if I could help move the armoire upstairs too. I think nothing of it and we pull it out of his travel trailer and start bringing it up the front stairs of his house. The front stairs are 11 steps. I was on the lower end of the armoire, about 6 steps up, when my neighbor and his friend lose the handle and it comes crashing down on me and I fall backwards towards the pavement. I then wake up in my dining room to my phone ringing and my wife asking me if I was going to answer the phone. It's my neighbor asking if I could help move the bed upstairs for his mom. I go over and meet the priest's friend again, and this has been the first time I met him. I say I can help you with the bed, but I cannot help you with the armoire. My neighbor was like, how do you know about the armoire? I then proceeded to tell him that I'm pretty sure I just died. I spent the next hour talking to the priest. He had so many questions. My neighbor didn't believe it until I described the upstairs bedroom in perfect detail, down to the metal material frame on the floor and the intricate headboard leaning against the wall, and I had never been upstairs in the house before. The priest told me what I saw after I died. I told him I never actually died. Before it happened, I woke up at my dining room table. Uh. 
about 10 years ago, I used to work for a small call center that did tech support for some smaller internet service providers throughout the country. The call center was 24 by 7, and it was probably the most stressful job I've ever had. But it paid the bills, and in the end, working nights meant that I could still go to school. So I pretty much just kept with it and did my best. Working the night shift meant that you knew everyone that you worked with, because there were only a handful of you there at any point in time. So when we got a new guy, it was almost an event because it was such a rarity. My glitch actually involves a new employee that we got, and it wasn't just the fact that he was new to the company that makes me remember the situation. It's that he had an accent. On that night that he started, he was introduced, and I was over the moon because he actually had a very thick Irish accent. He and I chatted a bit during the introduction, and come to find out he was from Ireland, and he had moved to the US about 20 or so years prior. He told me about his home life, his family, basically everything that a quick introduction could entail. I remember even commenting that I loved his accent, because it was one of those things that I said that was weird, and I caught it after I said it. I apologized to him after saying it, basically fessing up to the fact that I shouldn't have said it, and he laughed and told me it was totally fine. After we chatted for a few minutes, he got pulled away from his spot to shadow one of the other techs, so we could explain a few things to him which was basically all of the training that you got there. He told me that he'd see me around, and I went back to work. The night ended, I went home, everything was pretty normal. The next night, I actually looked around for him, but I didn't see him, so I assumed they either had him shadowing someone else, he was in training with the manager, or he may have had the day off. The next day was the same, he was nowhere to be found. On the third day, I was a bit upset, thinking that he may have decided that this job just wasn't for him, and didn't come back. I actually went over to the night manager and asked him if the man had quit, and he asked me who I was talking about. I said, you know, the guy that just started? He had a really thick Irish accent. He stared at me like I was insane and said that no one had been hired in the last couple weeks much less anybody from Ireland. I stood there literally describing this guy, how tall he was, how he looked, his backstory. None of it rang any bells with the manager. I thought that he was messing with me, so I shouted for the other tech that the guy had shadowed, and he had no idea who I was talking about. I asked a few of the other guys, and they too told me that... They did not remember a man with an Irish accent ever starting. I was the only one who remembered this man, apparently. Nobody that worked our shift had heard of a man with an Irish accent. None of them had any memory of this guy ever existing, with me being the only exception. I guess it is possible that they were all just messing with me, but to get that many guys to just pretend that somebody didn't exist for the fun of it... That would have been quite a feat. It was honestly really upsetting too, because he seemed like a cool dude, and I would have loved to have been friends with the guy. A couple years ago, I lost a ring my grandma gave me for Christmas. I wore that ring 24-7 and rarely took it off, However, when I did take it off, I always put it in the same place so I wouldn't lose it. This ring meant a lot to me since, sadly, my grandma passed away from cancer shortly after. One day, I remember looking down at my hand and starting to panic because the ring wasn't on my finger. Before getting really upset, I went and checked the usual spot where I put it, but it wasn't there. I remember telling my family and having them search the whole house. Anyways, I lost it a couple weeks before Christmas, so they told me that they would give me another. After they told me this, I went down to my basement to do my wash, 
and when I was putting my clothes in the dryer, I felt something hit me in the head and fall onto the floor in front of me. Lo and behold, it was my ring. It literally fell out of thin air. I told myself it was a little message from my grandmom, but it was one of the weirdest things. Still to this day, I think about it. About two weeks ago, I was driving home from a friend's house in a snowstorm. It wasn't supposed to snow that day, so it came on unexpectedly, hard and fast. The highway was relatively clear because of the constant traffic, but the heavy snowfall was already accumulating and freezing off the highway, which I discovered upon exiting. I stepped on my brakes to slow down at the red light ahead of me, where two cars were already waiting, but I began to slide. To avoid hitting the car stopped at the light, which I definitely would have if I hadn't changed directions. I turned my wheel and began sliding across the exit to the right side of the road. I was probably 25 yards across the street when I slid into a ditch. I was at a 45 degree angle and I was absolutely sure that my car was about to flip. I closed my eyes and braced for it, only to find myself on the cross street only a few seconds later, facing the right direction. I thought I possibly somehow drove the 25 yards onto the cross street, but I had already been mid-tumble with my eyes closed and would have somehow had to avoid the signs at the end of the exit, which would have been a hard impact at what I estimate to be around 45 miles per hour. Now I'm legitimately entertaining the idea that I died in a parallel universe. So I was home alone and my dog was outside. I let him in after a while because I didn't want him to get distracted chasing squirrels. After he came in, I went into another room to watch TV. Then I heard my dog barking from outside the way he does when he wants to come in. I opened the door and it was my dog. I swear I had let him in 10 minutes ago and there's no way he could have gotten outside so quickly with nobody else there. We were moving states today. My husband has our kids in one car and I have our dogs in the other. They are about five or six miles ahead of me. As I am passing a rest stop, I notice the trunk of a black Ford Edge open and filled with boxes. I'm like, why'd they stop without telling me? There was a guy wearing jeans and a green waffle knit long sleeve at the back door of the driver's side, buckling a kid into a car seat. Okay, that's what my husband is wearing today and those are the contents of her trunk. I'm seriously annoyed that they didn't tell me that they were stopping and it's already too late to pull off. I call my husband and ask him why he didn't tell me. He has no idea what I'm talking about. They didn't stop and they're still a few miles ahead of me. So I work for a joinery company and was delivering a load to a construction site about an hour away from work. I'm playing a Reddit compilation video through my headphones. I was about 8 minutes into the video in the middle of town at a red light with a bad feeling of deja vu. The video started buffering. I thought it was odd since I had good reception but was going to wait it out. The light went green and a video played just long enough to say the word wait and started buffering again. I couldn't see anything at all. The road was clear but I thought I'd listen, look left, then right again and there was a massive semi that appeared out of nowhere and ran the red light. It would have taken out the driver's side of the cab and I would have been toast if I hadn't waited. Definitely reminded me of my own mortality. I have a thing that happened when I was a kid that some people may not consider a glitch, but... It was really weird, and it definitely seems like it was, in fact, a glitch in reality. Something happened, and I cannot explain it, so I'm submitting it, and if you think it's a glitch or glitch-worthy, then you're free to use it. This happened back when I was eight years old, and it was during the summer, so I was out of school and had a lot of time to do whatever I wanted to do. My dad stayed home during the summer while my mom worked, and he typically had the late shift. So, he would go in when she was getting home. That way, somebody was always there to watch me. 
on the day that this happened, my dad was asleep pretty late in the day, and I had gotten up pretty early and had jumped straight on to my Nintendo 64. I wasn't supposed to spend the whole day playing it, but no one was really watching me closely, so I decided that I was going to play it until my dad got up, and then figure out something else to do. Like I mentioned, I had been up pretty early and my dad was going to sleep until noon at the latest, so I had a few hours. I put in Glover and was playing through the levels, and when I looked over at the clock, I noticed that it was already noon. I decided to just go ahead and shut it off just in case my dad did get up, and then went and made myself a sandwich. After eating it, I was sitting there watching TV, just kind of waiting for my dad to get up, and getting bored with watching daytime television. After about 20 or so minutes, I started dozing off and decided that I wanted to take a nap, so I put my head down on the couch and dozed off. This is where things ended on my side, because I was obviously asleep. When I finally woke up, I got off the couch and walked into the kitchen and was surprised to see my mom at the table on the phone. I didn't realize that my nap had been so long that she had gotten home. She hung up the phone while staring at me like she was confused as soon as she saw me. I said hi and asked her what was wrong, and she started asking me where I was, what I'd been doing, and several other questions. I told her that I was asleep on the couch and she said that that was impossible, and told me that I needed to tell her where I was. I kept telling her the same thing, that I was sleeping on the couch, because it was the truth. That's where I had been the whole time. To keep this story fairly short and explain what happened, my dad woke up, and when he did, he couldn't find me. He looked throughout the house, and I was apparently nowhere to be found. He said that he looked in my bedroom, the living room, upstairs, and even in the basement, and he could not find me. He then called my friends that lived on my street to see if I had gone to their houses, and obviously I wasn't there. He called my mom, and told her that I was seemingly missing, and she rushed home from work. When she saw me just walk into the kitchen like nothing had occurred, she was shocked. She had also checked all the rooms of the house, the yard, the shed, everything, and she had no idea where I was. It was the weirdest thing because they were within minutes of calling the police and reporting me as missing, but the whole time I was asleep on the couch in the next room. I wasn't covered up, I wasn't wearing something that would cause me to camouflage, and the room wasn't dark. Neither of my parents could find me, and I was right there. It was almost as if I just didn't exist. Now, I guess it's possible that they both could have somehow overlooked me on the couch, but it would be really weird to think that two adults could just not see a kid lying on the couch in the middle of a living room for multiple hours to the point that they were about to call the police. It almost seemed like I just disappeared from existence for a few hours and then came back whenever I woke up. My mom died 13 years ago. About four years ago, my dad went on vacation in Arizona with his girlfriend. He said he was up watching TV and the hotel phone rang. He answered it, said it was my mom's voice saying, I'm okay. He said, Cass? The phone went crackly and said, Heather, my name, I'm okay. He said his girlfriend was confused why the phone rang. He immediately called me even though it was late and he was crying. Dad doesn't believe in the supernatural, but still to this day cannot explain the call. So I never really put too much merit into this matrix theory until I experienced it myself with my husband on my wedding day. I'm a 30 year old female and my husband is 32. 
in 2020, we were able to get married even during the pandemic and at a small backyard wedding of 20 people and got married at our local outdoor park for our vows. Everything was perfect that day. The sun was out, air was crisp, and more importantly, all our loved ones were around to listen to us exchange our vows. So after my now husband and I exchanged our vows, we proceeded to walk down the aisle towards our photographer, as I'm sure all couples do after getting married. We got some shots with everyone in the background as we walked away. Satisfied with the photos, the photographer went off to look at the next location that we were all walking to to do formal pictures with the whole family. We turned around to walk back to our families and give them hugs, but when we turned around, no one was moving, no noise, nothing, perfectly silent, just looking at us. My husband and I were alarmed, and my husband even made a joke. Why is no one moving? Did we do something wrong? There was a solid 45 seconds of pure frozenness, then everything resumed. I've never experienced anything like that. There's simply no rational explanation for it other than a glitch in the matrix. Okay, so this just happened now. I ordered some photo card sleeves from Amazon a few days ago, and my package arrived today, exactly as I ordered, and I put them away. Then I came back from school and saw another package on my bed. I had bought an album that said it would come later than the sleeves, so I thought that was it. But no, it was more sleeves of exactly what I ordered. I then wanted to go check if somehow I dreamt my sleeves arriving and the sleeves themselves weren't where I left them, but the package that came in was in the bin and part of the sleeve packaging was still on my desk. I then went to go check the emails where I confirmed my order and I didn't somehow accidentally order two lots. I also checked and my bank balance hasn't changed, so I didn't end up reordering them on a separate occasion. It was the exact same amount, two softer sleeves, one harder sleeve. But also, the packaging is different, as in the label are two different fonts, and the cardboard packages are two different sizes. I have no idea how I could have misplaced the previous cards, or why I have more cards, on top of the fact that we never get two postman deliveries. It's just one time, at 11am every day, while I left for school at 1.15pm. I'm generally so confused. Everything I'm about to describe came to light in the last 30 minutes. I'm a 49 year old female and I drove to my parents house, 75 female and 78 male, to check on my dad. He was in the ER with chest pains earlier today and has since been discharged. Onto the glitch. My parents do not use reddit and have no clue what glitch in the matrix means. After the dust settled on, is dad okay? My mom presented me with an envelope that was in their mailbox this week with my writing on it. No debate, this is my writing and exactly how I would address the card to my parents, front and back, including Shirley's temple stamps from my mom. Glitch 1 Postmark is from July 2016, Los Angeles, which tracks where I lived in 2016, but how did it take six and a half years to get to my parents' mailbox? Reasonable answers, the car got stuck in the postal bin or inside my parents' mailbox for six and a half years. Okay, then riddled me this. Glitch 2. Yes, it's my handwriting on the envelope, but the card inside I've never seen. And based on the pop culture reference on the card, it's not a card I would send. And the message inside the card is my aunt's handwriting and signature. The card has been in transit for six and a half years and it's from my mom's sister, and addressed and sent by me. Reasonable explanation. My uncle, aunt's husband, my mom's brother-in-law, and my favorite uncle could have handed it off to me for mailing when he passed through LA. This explanation isn't totally wild because he travels a lot, and we always find time for a dinner together whenever he's local and passing through. However, I have zero recollection of us ever getting together in my seven years in LA nor any sort of card handoff. Plus, why would my aunt in Georgia give her husband a card to take to me in California to mail to my mom in Virginia? So Reddit, 
How did my mom receive a six and a half year old card mailed in my writing but sent from her sister on the day when my dad was in the hospital for a near death experience? Also just noticed the happy birthday Mo makes no sense. My mom's birthday is in November. The postmarks are July 2016. So this birthday wish was eight months late. I have a weird and kind of creepy glitch story that may be a case of quantum immortality. I'm really not sure. I can't say that I know a whole lot about simulation theory or glitches, and I know even less about what quantum immortality really entails, but I think that this falls into that category. In order to fully make sense of it all, I guess I need to explain what happened. This is not a situation that happened to me personally, it actually happened to my brother, and I'm a bit of a side victim to the situation. This is going to be a bit weird in structure, and I'm sorry for that, but I'm not really sure how to explain it all in a proper timeline, because the situation that caused it all happened about five years ago, and then I learned that the thing happened this past month and now I'm questioning everything from that moment forward. So, on that, five years ago there was a major incident in our family home. I was 16 at the time, and my brother was about to turn 18. It was the middle of winter, and it was getting pretty cold here in the Midwest. We had the heat on in the house, but my brother's room was in a separate room off to the side of the basement. The room was once a laundry room, but my dad had changed all of the hookups, so he had taken that room as his. Unfortunately, the basement did have issues with heat, so my brother had bought a small room heater to set up down there to keep it all as warm as the rest of the house. On the night that this happened, my brother had left his space heater on, and I don't really know if it was a short in the plug or the heater itself, but it ended up catching on fire. Now, I want to mention that I do not remember much about this night, beyond the house catching, me getting out, and the insanity and chaos that took place as the fire department put out the fire. I will say that while I don't remember much... There is one very specific detail that I don't recall anything about, and that is my brother. I don't remember him exiting the house, and I don't recall him ever being pulled out of the fire by anyone else. For some reason, his whereabouts after the fire started, for me, are completely unknown. I will say that I do remember him being home that evening, because he was there for dinner. We'd had pizza, and he asked Dad to get wings for him, which he did. I don't know why I recall that specifically, but I do. But for some reason, I have zero knowledge, memory, or idea where he was after the fire started. On the other end of this is my brother and what he remembers. He says that he remembers being home that night, and surprisingly, he said that he remembers the fire. He said that he was in bed and he remembers a weird popping sound that actually made him jump out of bed. Then, he recalls the room getting really hot and smoky. He said that he tried to get out of the laundry room but couldn't because the fire was blocking him in. With how that laundry room was built, there were no windows or exits outside of the main door and there was a decent amount of basement that existed between the laundry room and the stairs. Thinking about it, the old laundry room really should not have been used as a bedroom, but hindsight is twenty twenty. The whole thing that he told me sounds... horrible. He mentioned that he remembered starting to lose consciousness because of the smoke and heat, and that he tried as hard as he possibly could to get through the fire, but... He remembers being horribly burned, and he has a very detailed memory of not making it to the stairs before collapsing. Now, 
obviously, that's not what happened. But he remembers it very thoroughly. He says that after he collapsed on the ground in the basement, in his mind, he kept hearing his own voice telling him that he was not going to die there, that he was going to make it. He said that it was like he was telling himself that he was going to be okay, that he was going to make it, and that he was going to get up, but it wasn't him. I know that sounds confusing, but it was like a third-party version of himself was yelling at him to wake up and get out. Then, he says that he jumped awake, but that's where things get really strange. He says that when he woke up, it was morning, and he was at his friend Derek's house. He says that he asked Derek how he got there, and Derek told him all about how he'd stayed over that night, how they'd been playing Call of Duty all night, and how they had pizza. He looked outside, and sure enough, his car was sitting in Derek's driveway. According to Derek, Derek's parents, and even my parents, he had been there all night. He wasn't home whenever the fire broke out, a fact that everyone was beyond grateful for. However, he completely and totally remembers being in the fire. And I remember some of what he actually said, that he was home when we had dinner, and I don't ever remember him leaving. He says that he was home. Everyone else says that he was out. And for me, there's just a huge blank in my memory for where he was or what happened to him. It's a crazy event that I cannot explain. But my brother sincerely believes that he died in that fire. He remembers the pain, the heat, but he was, by all official and known accounts, not home that night. Like I mentioned, I'm not sure if this is a glitch, but based on his recollection of the fire, and the fact that I can't remember where he was, it all seems like something went wrong here. Something about all of this really confuses me, and it makes me think how broken our simulation may actually be. This happened the other day, and it was seriously the weirdest thing that I have ever witnessed. It may not seem like much of an event, but it was certainly strange, and I have no idea how to actually explain it. I live on a side road that is attached to one of the main roads of my area, and they have the main road shut down partially due to construction. It's been going on for what feels like forever, but thankfully, as of late, they've been making strides and getting it all finished. Because they're doing it in bursts and sections, they have to block off certain parts and turns and put up detours. But it hasn't been much of a problem until they went into it this hard. When this happened, they had blocked off a rather large section a bit down the road to the right, after turning off my road onto the main one. It was basically set up to where, if you turned right off of my road, you would hit construction within a few moments and have to immediately turn around. There were no driveways, no side roads, nothing like that, so there were a lot of cars that were going that way and having to immediately turn back around. It was almost humorous because from the intersection you could see that there was construction. Yet, people would still turn that way only to be sent back by the road being completely closed off. On to the event in question. My dad and I were sitting outside on the porch having a drink and enjoying the summer weather while talking about nothing in particular. We were watching people that went down the road and making a bet on how long it would be until we saw them make the U-turn and come back and laughing the whole time, mostly because, again, you could see the construction when you turned that way, and if you were paying attention, you could see that there was a whole section where there was no road at all. It was just broken down concrete blocked off by roadblocks. As we were sitting there, 
we saw a bright red Mustang head down the road. I made a comment that it was one hell of a car, because it was pretty clearly well maintained and taken care of. Then, when it got to the stop sign at the end, they hit their blinker to the right. My dad and I both threw out a number of how many seconds it would be until we saw him turn around. He turned to the right and started down the hill, and we just sat there waiting. We were both counting out the seconds and watching, but we were genuinely surprised when we didn't see it come back. We were both kind of scratching our heads, like, how long is he going to sit at that road close sign and just watching? After a couple of minutes, we both decided to walk down to the end of the yard to look at where the road ends to see if he was seriously just sitting there. But when we went and looked, the Mustang wasn't there. Somehow, this guy had just disappeared, but there was no way that he would have taken that car off-road, and like I mentioned, there was nowhere to turn off of the road or go. It was completely and totally blocked. He didn't turn around like we weren't paying attention or anything like that, because we would have absolutely noticed the bright cherry red and very shiny Mustang. It was super weird. He was there, he turned right towards the construction, and then he was just gone. Neither of us had an explanation other than my dad joking about how it was a ghost car, and if that's the case, then there's a ghost out there that has damn good taste in cars, and a decent amount of money to spend on one. <laughs>